Uh, Gale that I helped shape about 19 years ago is an urban strategy and design practice based out of Copenhagen, New York, and San Francisco. We focus on making cities for people. We work globally with uh, challenges that cities and communities face, like we just heard, and really uh, working with a quite diverse set of clients, from foundations to cities and mayors, to the World Bank and developing, um, developing banks, private companies, developers, and NGOs, on strategies to reach their goals uh, while improving quality of life for people in those places. Now, cities are diverse, but yet they share some of the same challenges uh, across the globe. Just to name five of them, transportation, employment, migration, population growth, governance, and finance, not to mention climate change and social in, uh, disintegration. All of these various issues uh, share the same denominator, denominator, people. So we really need to understand the needs of people and the behavior of people in those places. So culture is really, really important. And that's why every project we do at Gale, we start with analyzing the public life of a city. What is happening in the public spaces? How are people behaving? When we look at Climate, of course, that is very different in every place as well. And many city leaders are telling me that, oh, hell, we cannot bicycle, for example, in this city because it's too hot or it's too cold, just to mention one topic. But in Copenhagen over the past 25 years, more than 50% of the population now is bicycling. And that's not because we are different species than anyone else in the world. It's not because we have Viking bloods running in our veins, but basically because the design of the streets are compelling people to do so. So design just does change culture over time, and we need to understand how people in those spaces are seeking comfort and how that design can enable health and diversity and inclusion of all people. We do see a paradigm shift uh, in planning happening uh, globally, I would say, where we are moving away from this transportation-led approach to planning that we saw back in the 50s and 60s to understanding that people really do need to be at the center of those processes, enabling public spaces for all. So the way that we approach it again is to have a systemic approach to this uh, by combining urban strategy with future mobility thinking about master planning with, a, with an outset in public, public spaces and then focusing on people-first design. We use public life data to support the decision-making process and really focus on change over a period of time, engaging the political leadership in, in stepping up for those changes. So the approach here is combination, combina combining social science with design, so really understanding the needs of people as the first and the baseline for any design that we do. Now, I want to share a few cases with all of you, starting with uh, New York, Times Square, that a lot of you have probably visited. We uh, began looking at Times Square uh, way back about 10 years ago, really mapping how that space was laid out and how it was used. 90% of the space at the time was road space. So really, there was no, squ no square on Times Square. So we were able to consider these different changes and uh, get the politicians in the city to reimagine what that space could look like. So over the course of two months, we transformed a lot of different public spaces on Manhattan and in the neighboring boroughs to enable a completely new ima imagination of what the spaces of New York could be like in the future. We are also engaging in big transportation corridor projects, such as this one in George Street in Sydney, transforming what was a crammed, uh, very trafficated street in the, future, uh, in, the, in the past to a future that is much more oriented towards inclusive design and integration of new public transportation as light rail. This project is being implemented as we speak and opening up this year. Now, these projects take a long time to implement, uh, usually 10 to 15 years. 
So in the interim period, we are engaging communities in pilot projects, such as this one, Market Street, uh, where we introduced a living innovation zone in San Francisco to start help people imagine how they could engage differently in that space. This intervention is a speaking bowl where basically when you sit in the very center of this bowl, you can speak to the person on the other side of the sidewalk. Now, this was an engaging design where all of a sudden we saw people of different race, different economic background, uh, different age groups that were all of, the, all of a sudden engaging in that, uh, in that street that they had never done before. And we made it open source so that that enabled this young fellow to come with his own device so that he could plug into this bench, enabling music to play whenever people were holding each other's hands and touching the two sides of every part of the bench. Another project in Shanghai, we have introduced a 45 kilometer long new pathway along the river by introducing four very simple strategies that you were able to move along the river, that we could connect the connecting communities to this new place, creating new meeting places along the river, and not least opening up the ground floors uh, of every building connecting to this space. So the vision was really to create a much more inclusive and healthy place for people to meet, where they could breathe healthy, new, fresh air uh, down to this uh, natural river. Turning what was before an industrial site that was not used, and providing a public space where people all of a sudden in the evenings could go here and meet each other and just relax or take a stroll in a place where they were not able to have access to public space before. And we are turning the side streets into from used to be just a, a street and a road space into connecting and prioritizing walking and cycling and public transportation so that people can easily get to where they live, from where they live to this new fantastic public space experience. And it's not just cities that are moving towards public space. It is really also companies, it is museums, it is universities, it is institutions that are turning towards public space and thinking about the surrounding neighborhoods and communities. Now, we have been working for the company IKEA to rethink their sites, going from just deserted parking lots to people places, and connecting what used to be a disconnected, uh, disconnected suburban place to a much more integrated urban area. Really thinking about how to turn very siloed areas into a mixed-use development, introducing housing, introducing creative office facilities, integrating everyday life experiences and, and programs, and really turning the IKEA sites into a community and not just a store. So, to wrap this up, it's all about the experience. It's about how we, as human beings, from an eye-level perspective, walking in the streets, we are considering all these different uh, things and how they come together. We don't think about the disruption of different agencies and what is owned by whom and so forth. But unfortunately, this is the way that the cities are managed today. The cities are siloed into transportation departments, urban departments, cultural departments, social departments, health departments, and we have, and we need design to join up the thinking across all these various agencies and to rethink what cities can be like in the future. And that is circularity, but at a city scale, not just thinking about the resources, but thinking about the whole city as a place that we need to develop further. We see a process happening right now where policymakers at a national level are moving from thinking about themselves as regulators to enablers. We see a process in the municipalities where the municipalities are no longer just thinking about themselves as approving mechanisms for building approvals, but really thinking about themselves as facilitators of change over time. 
And even businesses are moving from just thinking about themselves as business, or the building and the facility that they are, they are in, to thinking about real impact, place impact, and longer term value. And I would bet that every one of you in this space, you are at different stages of this development moving forward. So wrapping this up, I think we need to focus on what we share in order to develop the future. I think we need to integrate human behavior in order to create places that are healthy, that are diverse, that are inclusive. And I would go this far. I've never spoken at a design um, venue before. But I don't think it's design, the, 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 the design itself that matters. I think it's the, the design, what the design actually does. It is about the quality of life that that design enables. And in our case, that quality of life is public life. How that public life can be healthier, more inclusive, more dynamic, and how that enables everyone in cities to live a healthier life in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs>